Gordon was on his way back to Tidmouth Sheds. This was the mountainous part of the island with lots of passes and tunnels. As he went through one of the passes, his weight dislodged a number of rocks onto the track below. Steaming round the bend, he saw the rocks late, applied his brakes, but couldn't stop. Gordon hit the rocks and derailed hitting the side of the tunnel. His driver got word back to the Sodal Search and Rescue Centre. Harold the helicopter took off to make the short flight over the mountains to look at Gordon. His mission was to decide upon the best way to rescue him. Harold loved hovering over Sodor. Very soon he saw Gordon far below and went down to have a closer look. Don't worry Gordon! Harold shouted. We'll soon have you back on the track. And with that he climbed high into the air and started his return back to the search and rescue centre. Harold radioed ahead with his report and as he landed Thomas, who was the search and rescue duty engine today, was already getting Rocky the crane out of his shed. He coupled Rocky up to him and set off to find Gordon. Thomas and Rocky eventually arrived, but because Gordon was blocking the track, Thomas had to back Rocky up. Gordon was relieved to see them. Rocky got into position and swung his arm out over Gordon. He lowered his magnetic grab until it attached itself to Gordon. Rocky then heaved with all his might and gradually lifted the front part of Gordon and placed him back on the rails. Thank you Rocky, said Gordon, as he backed away from the rockfall. Rocky returned his lifting arm back to the car. Jack arrived and started clearing the rocks from the track. Very soon the track was clear and Gordon could continue on his journey. Thomas and Rocky also started their return to the search and rescue centre. Gordon was very careful on the mountain passes now and Thomas and Rocky were delighted to have helped their friend. Thomas returned Rocky to his shed and the search and rescue centre was ready and on standby to help others in trouble. James and Spencer were busy, but were also very wet. It had been raining for what seemed like weeks. The ground was saturated. Only the birds on the lake were happy with all the rain. The engines didn't know it, but one of the brick supports holding up the track leading up to the bridge had been weakened by the soft ground. Every time they rolled over it, their weight weakened it a bit more. Then a few cracks appeared. 
then a few more. Then the whole support started shaking. And finally, when James rolled over it, the support gave way. Luckily, James had already reached the next support before it collapsed, so it was safe, but he stopped. His driver telephoned for help. Sir Topham Hatt turned up in his car to see the damage. James's driver and Sir Topham Hatt looked at the collapsed support and track hanging in the air. We must close this line and get the support rebuilt straight away. I'll get the Play-Doh digging rigs crew to come and fix this immediately. And he left. James continued on his journey. Very soon digging rigs Philip arrived with the safety barriers. It had stopped raining now. The barriers were put in place and Philip set to work pulling out the old support. He was very strong and this was an easy job for him. The next stage was to put in some steel girders for the track and these were going to be reinforced with bricks. Philip went to the Play-Doh brick mill and watched as the raw materials for the bricks were inserted in the machine. The handle was then turned and bricks appeared out of the bottom of the machine. These were cut to size and loaded into Philip's scoop. He returned to the track and started building the brick support around the steel. He needed a lot of bricks, but very soon the support was finished. Sir Topham Hatt came to see Philip's finished work and was very pleased. Excellent, he said. We'll be able to open the line again tomorrow. Well done. Philip cleared away the barriers and the next day James and Spencer were back on the line again. James was the first engine to try the new support, which worked perfectly. Sometimes you just know that it's going to be one of those days. Well, for the engines working down at Brendam Docks, today was one of those days. The troublesome trucks were being extra troublesome. There was a lot of cargo to move and Thomas and James were helping Salty and Porter. The more the trucks banged and bumped into each other, the harder the engines hit them. This was getting a little out of hand. Then there really was trouble. A troublesome truck pushed another truck really hard. It hit James and its cargo of paint pots spilled out all over poor old James. There was red, green and yellow paint everywhere. And if that wasn't bad enough, the same thing happened to Thomas but this time with coal. Sir Topham Hatt heard about the trouble and arrived quickly. Trucks, said Sir Topham Hatt, you must stop being so troublesome to the engines. There's a lot of work to do today. Thomas and James, go and get yourselves cleaned up. I know how to deal with these trucks. Thomas and James left for the engine wash and Sir Topham Hatt also left. He went to see a friend of the engines called Chompa. Now Chompa was an excavator who helped move earth and gravel when they were laying new track. His grab claw was very big and very strong. Sir Topham Hatt told Chompa about his plan. Chompa agreed to help and started his journey. Back at the docks, Thomas and James had returned and the trucks were being readied for more cargo. They were still very troublesome though. 
Chomper then arrived and went up to the trucks. The trucks started laughing at him. You don't scare us, Chomper. With that, Chomper stretched out his grabber and grabbed one of the trucks. He then lifted it clean in the air. The trucks stopped laughing. Put me down, put me down. Chomper agreed, but he put the truck down on top of another truck to the delight of the engines. He then continued to work his way through the trucks, stacking them up in piles. And he had a little help from Thomas. Please don't send us for scrap said the trucks to Sir Topham Hatt. We'll behave now. Sir Topham Hatt said he'd think about it. And he thanked Chomper for his hard work. You've been very useful today, Chomper. It was raining. In fact, it was quite a storm. In, the Sodor lifeboat was sheltering in his dock at the search and rescue centre when he got a message that a boat had drifted onto the rocks near the Sodor lighthouse. Luckily the passengers had been able to scramble out before the boat turned onto its side but they now needed rescuing from the lighthouse. Captain set out from the shelter of his little dock into the wind, rain and waves. He was used to the rough sea. Most of his rescues were in these conditions. A few years ago there would have been a lighthouse keeper at the lighthouse to give the boat's passengers some protection, but it was now a fully automatic lighthouse, no lighthouse keeper. Captain battled through the waves and eventually arrived close to the lighthouse. He pulled alongside the rocks in a sheltered stretch of water and all the boat's passengers were able to climb aboard him. With everyone safe, he moved away from the rocks and started the voyage back to the shelter and safety of his dock at the search and rescue centre. When he arrived, the passengers climbed ashore and thanked Captain for being so brave. Thomas arrived with Annie and Clarabel to take the passengers to the main search and rescue building where they could get dry before being taken back to their homes. The storm carried on for quite a while, but everyone was safe and the search and rescue centre was again on standby to help anyone in trouble. Gordon was on his way to an outlying village to deliver their Christmas plum puddings. It was snowing and the engines had all fitted their snow ploughs all except Gordon. He decided that he was strong enough to push away any silly snow. The snow got heavier and started lying in drifts on the track in places. Gordon was doing well until he met a deeper drift 
and his wheel started spinning. And spinning. And spinning. Until they were still spinning, but he wasn't moving. He was stuck. His driver contacted Sir Topham Hatt, who sent out a rescue party. James, Henry, Thomas, Emily and Harrow all had their ploughs fitted and made light work of the snowdrifts. James and Thomas reached Gordon first. Gordon was very pleased to see them. It was decided that Thomas would go in front of Gordon to clear the track and James behind to push Gordon out of the drift. Gordon puffed his hardest and with James pushing he slowly moved forwards and out of the drift. He could now continue his journey on the track that Thomas had cleared. James stayed very close behind and as soon as Gordon's wheels started to slip on the snow, James was there to push him forwards. Henry, Harrow and Emily all steamed up and down the track keeping it clear. Eventually, Thomas, Gordon and James reached the village to deliver their Christmas plum puddings. The villagers were really grateful and gave them all a big cheer.
It was another hectic day on Sodor. The engines were busy carrying out their jobs for the day and everything was going well. Except Edward had caught a cold and started sneezing. And Edward's sneeze is very loud and very disruptive to his trucks. One sneeze was so loud that his truck juddered and some of the coal fell out onto the track. Hero, who was helping Farmer McColl move his milk churns, followed Edward but didn't see the coal on the track until it was too late to stop. The coal lifted Hero's wheel right off the track and he travelled across the grass until he was stopped by a tree. His truck overturned, spilling milk everywhere. It splashed all up the side of Hero. What a mess! The Sodor search and rescue team were called and Thomas left with Rocky the Crane to get Hero on the track again. Sir so Topham Hat was also on his way. Thomas and Rocky arrived and Rocky immediately swung into action. Oh dear Thomas, said Rocky, I can't reach Hero. Just then Sir Topham Hatt arrived. He looked at the problem and said, Don't worry Hero, I've got an idea. Now on the other side of Sodor, the sleepy side of Sodor, there was a garage. It was Grandad Dog's garage. Daddy and Mummy Pig then drove into the garage. They were taking George to the dentist and wondered if Grandad Dog could look after Pepper. Of course I will, he said. I'll be able to play with her because nothing interesting ever happens here. Pepper jumped out. Mummy and Daddy Pig left. Pepper played with Grandad Dog and then the phone rang. Come on Pepper, we've been asked to help with a railway rescue. Now Grandad Dog's garage might be small, but he has a very big tow truck. Back at the accident, Hero was being very patient. Grandad Dog and Pepper arrived. Thanks for coming, said Sir Topham Hat. Can you pull Hero nearer the rails? Grandad Dog got his tow truck in position. He attached his hook to the troublesome truck, which was still attached to Hero. He got back in his tow truck and pulled. Hero gradually moved nearer the rails, where Rocky would be able to reach him. Thank you, Grandad Dog, said Sir Topham Hat, and they left. Jack then arrived to clear the coal. He then cleared up the milk churns. Thomas moved Rocky into position. He then lifted Hero back onto the rails. When Rocky had finished, Thomas started his journey back to the search and rescue centre. Hero, still covered in milk splashes, moved off in the direction of the engine wash. Percy woke up and moved out of the Tidmouth sheds onto the turntable. James heard him and popped his head out. Morning Percy, have you been changed as well? 
Percy looked down. Yes, my wheels are different and my engine feels stronger. You wait until you try your new wheels on the new track, Percy. They give you so much more grip. Percy was excited. Sir Topham Hatt then appeared. Percy, we've built you a new set for your new wheels. It's called Sort and Switch Delivery and it will help you with the mail. Go through the tunnel and try it out. I'll see you later. Percy sped off fast on his new wheels in the direction of the tunnel and this is his actual speed on fresh batteries. Percy went through the tunnel, over the track adapter, which comes with a set, over the new points and onto the new track. As he went by the Sodor mail sorting station, his special cargo car dumped the shipment down the chute. He raced round to the Sodor post office to retrieve it, where it had transformed into a different colour. The Topham Hat then arrived. How do you like your set, Percy? It's great, said Percy. Wait there just a minute, sir. I've found a parcel addressed to you from Brazil. The special parcel arrived at the post office and Sir Topham Hat started undoing it. A football. Thank you Brazil and Sir Topham Hat showed off his football skills. New Percy and New James were busy getting used to the new Trackmaster track. Their new wheels helped them climb steeper hills. Old Spencer then turned up at the new track. Hello Spencer, said Percy. Do you like our new track? I'm going to try it, said Spencer. No Spencer, you can't, said Percy. You haven't got your new wheels yet. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor, said Spencer, and nothing stops me. With that, he rushed onto the new track and started up the steep slope. It wasn't easy. His wheels started spinning and he was juddering. Come on, said Spencer. His fireman opened his boiler to shovel in more coal as Spencer leapt into the air with one final heave, driving him over the brow of the hill far too fast and he crashed at the bottom. Maybe I should have waited for my new wheels, said Spencer. What he didn't realise was that when he reared up at the top of the hill, some of his hot coal fell out of his boiler onto the wooden sleepers. The sleepers then caught fire and before long the middle of the bridge was really burning. The Sodor search and rescue team were called. Flynn and Bell left with sirens blazing. Flynn arrived first. The fire on the bridge was so high up his jets wouldn't reach from the ground, so he had to go up the bridge itself. Then there was trouble. Flynn's wheels hadn't been modified 
and he couldn't get any grip on the new track. He pulled away to let Bell have a go. The same thing happened. The search and rescue fire engines hadn't any new wheels between them. So Topham Hat arrived. Oh dear, I seem to have overlooked your modification, he said. Then he thought, I know who can help. Very shortly, Play-Doh Diggin' Rig's Boomer the fire truck arrived. He was a huge fire engine. Thanks for coming, said Sir Topham Hat. Boomer got into position near the bridge and started pumping water. The fire was extinguished quickly. Thank you, Boomer, said Sir Topham Hat. That's really kind of you. Boomer left. That just leaves you, Spencer. You really should have waited for your new wheels before trying to go up a steep hill like that. Spencer had already realised his mistake. Thomas, the duty fire engine for the day, eventually arrived. He had his new wheels fitted, but had struggled pulling Rocky's weight on the old track. Still, Spencer wasn't going anywhere. Thomas moved Rocky into position. He moved his arm out, attached his magnetic grab onto Spencer's tender and heaved it back onto the track. Thank you Rocky, said Spencer. Rocky moved his arm in and Thomas pulled him away. Spencer had to continue his journey on the new track, but he took it very carefully and looked forward to getting his new wheels.
Sodor's search and rescue centre was on standby to help anyone in trouble. Harold had just taken off to go on one of his routine patrols. It was a nice clear day on Sodor and flying was easy. Just then he got a call to say that a house in a nearby village was on fire. Harold was quite close to the village and quickly arrived to get a good look at the extent of the fire while the search and rescue centre prepared Flynn and Bell for action. Don't worry, he shouted, Flynn and Bell are on their way. The people told Harold that nobody was inside the building, which was a relief. returned to the centre and landed just as Flynn burst through his shed doors, sirens blazing, quickly followed by Belle from her shed. Firing Flynn to the rescue! They raced each other through the country and into the village. Flynn and Bell got into position and pointed their water hoses at the fire. They quickly put out the fire to the cheer of the crowd that had gathered. The roof continued to smoulder a little from the heat, but the fire was out and the engines prepared to return to base. Flynn backed up to let Belle leave first and he followed her away to another cheer from the crowd. The engines made it back to the centre in good time, returned to their sheds and the search and rescue centre was again on standby, ready to help anyone in trouble.
It was a busy day on Sodor. The engines and buses were hard at work moving passengers and cargo. Now there was one bridge which was higher than most of the bridges on Sodor. It went over two other railway tracks and two roads. If you wanted to see engines and buses, this was a good place to come. There was always something happening. Today, Percy found that he couldn't go as fast as usual up the slope to cross the bridge. These trucks are really heavy today, said Percy. Then there was trouble. The extra weight in the trucks caused one of the bridge supports to give way and the bridge just collapsed with Percy and his trucks crashing onto the road below. Just then Bertie came round the corner just stopping in time. It's a good job I was running a little late today said Bertie. Are you alright Percy? Percy said he was but he needed to get back on the track. The Sodor Search and Rescue Centre was scrambled and sent Harold, Thomas and Rocky to help. So Top and Hat was on his way in his car. Harold was the first to arrive. Don't worry Percy, shouted Harold. Rocky is on his way. So Top and Hat arrived, followed by Thomas and Rocky. Rocky, you need to uncouple your end car and Thomas will push you onto the safe part of the bridge. The workman uncoupled Rocky's car. He then got into position very carefully on top of the bridge. He swung his arm out and lowered his magnetic grab that was attached to Percy. Rocky heaved and pulled Percy upright. Percy's rear wheels were now on the track again. Rocky, we need you to pull Percy up the bridge track now. Thomas and Rocky pulled away and went to the other side of the bridge. Thomas carefully moved Rocky into position. The workman coupled Percy to Rocky. Thomas then pulled Rocky and Rocky pulled Percy up the track. They uncoupled and all left. Digging Rig's chomper arrived and started clearing the mess and repairing the bridge. When he'd finished, they found that the road had a nasty hole in it which needed to be filled. Chuck arrived with a load of chippings. He tipped them out over the hole. Roland the steamroller then started rolling it to make it nice and flat for Bertie to use. With the road repaired, Bertie eventually continued on his journey to a cheer from his passengers. 
Sir Topham Hatt left and Percy returned for his trucks. He then tested the repaired bridge on his way home. James had had a very busy day and was looking forward to a good sleep in Tidmouth Sheds. The following morning he awoke refreshed. Wow, he said, that was a good sleep. I feel like a new engine. Victor popped his head out and said, yes, that's because you are a new engine. Overnight we reshaped your body, gave you a faster engine powered by two AAA batteries. We've changed your wheels to help you climb hills better. And you've been repainted to go with your new Tale of the Brave set called Troublesome Traps. Go on James, go for a run, see how you feel. And if you want to really test yourself, go through the tunnel and try out your new set, if you're brave enough. Wow, said James, a set just for me? He steamed off. Wow, I feel so fast. He came to the tunnel and stopped. Am I brave? Yes, let's give it a go. And off he went. He came through the tunnel over the adapters joining the two track types together, over the redesigned points and on to his very own set troublesome traps. His new wheels made light work of the steep hills. Through the rickety bridge past the scary haystack and onto the haunted barn. He tried it the other way around as well. Victor then arrived to see how James was getting on. Victor was still the old style engine with the old style wheels. It will be dark soon James, good luck. Darkness fell and it got a whole heap scarier. Eventually, James decided it was time to leave his new set and went home. <laughs>